living healthy with intention. Welcome to The Hopefulist with me, Wendy McClure. This is where we turn those nasty, negative thoughts into positive and work toward a happy, fulfilled life. Now, let's get started. Hello and welcome to The Hopefulist. It's the start of a brand new week and the beginning of a new month. We will start out today with the quote of the day. Allow yourself to experience whatever your heart desires as if this is your one and only chance to take the ride of your life. Because it is. This is your one and only chance to make life exactly as you design it. And you know, really, that's what the hopefulist is all about. It's about you and making your dreams come true, about enjoying your day-to-day life, about waking up and looking forward to the day because you know it will be a happy one. It's about having 85% good days compared to bad. Now, as a lifelong pessimist, I had, I wouldn't say 85% bad days, but, you know, let's go with 75. And that's not good. That's not good. But when you learn how to transform your thoughts from negative to the positive, You literally do wake up every day excited and hopeful that it will be a great day. Because you know now that the power to make that happen is in your hands. And it always has been. And that's what becoming a hopefulist is is all about learning that you are in charge, that you call the shots, that it's up to you whether you look forward to your day or whether you dread the upcoming day. With all that said, welcome to a brand new month. I know it's a couple of days in, but uh, how has the first two months of the year been going for you? Have you followed through with your New Year's resolutions, any of those New Year goals that you had set? Any of your goals? Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. The good news is you can start fresh right now. And you can do that by living with intention. Instead of letting the days take you where they may, You can live intentionally and make sure the day goes exactly as you plan. Well, maybe not exactly, but when you have a plan, then you can follow that plan. But when you don't even have a plan, then your days are all over the place because there's no structure to them. There's no intent. There's no goal. Oprah who y'all know is my personal development guru and my best friend. She just doesn't know it yet. She starts out every action of her day with intention. Whenever she has a meeting, she asks the other participants, all right, what is the intention for this meeting? What is the goal? What are we going to accomplish by the time this meeting ends? When you have a job or activity, you will be part of, ask what the intention is. What is the outcome you would like to see and work toward that? See the end and imagine how you can make yourself work up toward that and how you want to feel when it's over. Something I recently started doing along with my Uh, gratitude journal first thing in the morning and my goal list. Um, I write down my top 10 goals every single morning immediately after I do my five items on my gratitude 
list. And I recently started putting down, what is your intention for today? And the reason that I write down 10 goals, you know, and I've heard this from numerous people, Rachel Hollis, and there's all kinds of people who have talked about writing down your 10 goals each and every day, because it keeps them front of mind. It keeps them right there where you can remind yourself on the daily of what it is you are working toward, right? So I just recently started putting, what is your intention for today? And theoretically, it should be related to one of those 10 goals. What is it I'm going to be working on today? What is it I'm going to be working on today? It gives you a direction for the day instead of letting the day take you along for its ride. So let's start out this month by talking about our health. Take a minute to think about how you feel in your body and your mind lately. Are you feeling at your peak? Is there room for improvement? I'm sure there is room for improvement. But if we're talking about intention, let's think about how you want to feel. Strong, resilient, rested, glowing, any or all of these words come to your mind? Okay, great. Next, we need to figure out how we get to feeling that way. The first question you have to ask yourself is, are you getting the proper amount of sleep It has so much to do with how we feel throughout the day. If you aren't feeling energetic, it may be an issue with your sleep or more than likely your lack of sleep. If you are getting less than five hours of sleep a night, you are likely not getting enough. I know there are some people that say that they can sleep four hours a night and they are at optimal capacity, optimal output. Hey, You know yourself. You know your own body. If you think that you only need four hours of sleep, maybe you do. That is not the majority of people. The optimal amount of sleep is seven to nine hours a night. Again, depending on the person. As someone who had insomnia for many years, it can cause all types of issues. From lack of energy to being extra cranky to craving high-fat comfort foods. Once I finally solved my insomnia problem, my happiness level skyrocketed. This is an example of why sleep is so important. Rest, relax, restore, restore. That's what it's all about. You can't keep putting out and giving out If you don't ever restore yourself, think of yourself like your smartphone. Your smartphone needs to be charged. If it doesn't, what happens to it? It dies. And it would take you a lot longer to die than your smartphone. But if you're constantly putting out and never recharging That's what's going to happen to you too. You need to take that time to restore yourself. And the more that you do, the more time you need to rest and restore. Just like your smartphone. If you're on your phone all day long, it might be depleted by 5 o'clock by the time you even leave work. Because you've been at it and on it and on it and on it and on it. You got to charge it before you even get done work for the day. Think about yourself as you would think about your smartphone. You need to recharge yourself. It's really that simple. So if you're having issues with sleep, I urge you to speak to your doctor to figure out a solution. Coming from someone who had insomnia for many, many years, it literally almost drove me batty. It literally made me insane Well, not literally insane, but I felt like I was on the brink all the time. And I was a pretty cranky person to begin with and not getting enough sleep. 
This is why I say my husband is a saint. He dealt with all of my issues. <laughs> and he's still here. <laughs> all right, next. The food that we take into our body. Now, we all love junk. Why? Well, because it's yummy. That's why. But it's not good for us. This is not news. We've always known this, but we indulge anyway. Have you ever seen those videos making the rounds on Facebook about how unhealthy McDonald's is? Okay, this is not news. We've all known that McDonald's is not healthy food. But I'll tell you what, there is just nothing better than a quarter pounder with cheese and a large fry every once in a while. Moderation. Same thing with hot dogs. I've always told people, I don't, I don't want to know what's in a hot dog because I love me a good hot dog in the summer on the grill. I just don't want to think about what's in it. So it's okay to indulge, just not as your main source. Just not as your main food source. But what if you started thinking about food as fuel instead of something fun to partake in several times a day? Now, don't get me wrong. Eating should be a joyful experience. But there are so many healthy options now that are also delicious. And I will let you in on a little secret. Once you start eating more healthy food, that is what you will crave. I know this to be 100% true. And I'll follow up with a little story. When I was in my early 30s, I started going to a personal trainer for the very first time. And it was one-on-one training in his own facility. It was normally just me and him at the time. So we had a lot of time to talk about you know, the workout and talk about foods and foods that are good to uh, indulge in after your workout versus what foods you should be eating before your workout. And one of the things he told me was the best thing to eat for breakfast would be peanut butter on whole grain bread, whole wheat bread, something that's got grain in it. And I started making myself peanut butter sandwich on whole wheat and I would just fold the bread up and I would eat that as my breakfast. Now who doesn't love peanut butter, right? Whole wheat? Eh. Did not really eat whole wheat at that point in my life, but I enjoyed it. In fact, so much so that now I consider that a treat. It's not typically what I eat for breakfast anymore. I do still have it once in a while throughout the day. In fact, I just had a a little sandwich last night before bed because I really uh, was very, very active yesterday. I played me a lot of pickleball. By the end of the day, I had burned 1,500 calories. Oh, yes. I deserve me a little treat. So what was the treat that came to my mind? Peanut butter on whole wheat with a dollop, just a dollop of strawberry preserves. Now, normally my treat would be a brownie, bowl of ice cream, big bag of Doritos. I love my peanut butter on whole wheat now. Put that little dollop of preserves. Mm -mm. So good. You know how much I love my avocado toast. I have that almost every day. I have a half avocado on rye toast. I get the Russian rye. If you're ever in your uh, grocery store's bakery session uh, section, that's where I find it. There's usually a whole array of different rye breads. And the Russian rye, it's very uh, meaty, so to speak. It's got a good uh, consistency. It holds up is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's what I use. I use a piece of Russian rye, half auto avocado, And I sprinkle my everything but the bagel slice, uh, spice that is. I don't know why I'm getting all my words mixed up today, so I apologize. Um, And then I put an over easy egg on top. Oh, it's to die for. I love it. I even eat it on the weekends sometimes when normally I would have some scrambled eggs with cheese and a bagel 
for breakfast with my husband. <laughs> so find healthy foods that you love and that you consider a treat, even though they're healthy. So that's what your go-to will be as you go throughout your day. And every once in a while, you can have the McDonald's or you can have the brownie or what have you. But make the majority of your diet healthy foods that will fuel you. Right? On to the next thing. Moving your body. How often do you move your body in a healthy way? None of us love to exercise. None of us. But it's so good for us in so many ways. Not only does it burn calories, makes you stronger, it's great for your heart, but here's the best part and the part that we don't focus on. It is the biggest happiness booster on the market. I know you've heard this before, but we put it in the back of our mind and we don't concentrate on that. We don't focus on that. And this, the best part, it's a totally free Totally free. Doesn't cost you anything. Now, it is hard to get into a workout routine and then even harder usually to stick with it. But that is what living with intention is all about. You can start out as slow as you want. As long as you start. Maybe just start with going for walks or dance around the living room. Go for a bike ride or do yoga. Pick something that interests you because then you will more likely stick with it and then make a plan to do it weekly or daily. And here's the thing about exercise. We all dread doing a workout till it's done. Once it's done, we feel so good about ourselves. Not only do we get that happiness boost, the benefits of the high a uh, higher rate of your heart being increased, but also a sense of accomplishment. You know, that's really important to us, the sense of accomplishment. It's something that you can be proud of. It's something that builds your confidence. It's something that proves to you that you are capable of doing what you say. I don't think I've ever heard one person ever in my lifetime say, I'm really sorry I did that workout, unless they hurt themselves, right? We all love the fact that we worked out after we worked out. So just do it. Just do it. Now take a little time to think about how you want to feel in your body. How do you want to go through your days? A healthy body leads to a healthy mind And vice versa. Taking care of yourself is something you will never regret. You and your body are the best investment you will ever make. And it will greatly improve your quality of life. So you can play with those grandkids and those great grandkids long into the future. Longer life. Longer life. A longer, happier life. If you would like to learn how living with intention can lead you to loving all of your days, please contact me. I'd love to speak about working together so we can get you on the path of the life of your dreams, the path and the life that you design for yourself. I want you to wake up looking forward to what the day has to offer. So schedule a free call with me right now by sending an email to thehopefulestone at gmail.com or check out the training section of my website at hopefulest.com slash training. I hope this month holds all the things you've been dreaming of. Live with intention and it will all come along faster. Now, go on out there and be badass. You know I'm here always cheering you on. 
Thank you for listening to The Hopefulist. Now, don't you feel good? Make sure you come back next week. See you then.